Hello. Good morning. That's funny that my hanging out comment, automatic comment is coming up five minutes or three minutes after I launched the stream. But anyway, <laughs> good morning. How are y'all? Evan Max, thanks for the sub. All kinds of new and different ads this morning, right? Xfinity, Discover, Black Rifle Coffee, Mountain Dew, all the new ads. Tony with the big 11 month sub. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Good morning, Tessa. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Beast. Beasting. Oh boy. I'm a. Uh... Oh, yes. Please let me know if you have weird sound effects going on. I've been playing around with the sound. Um, tell me if something's changed. Uh, So we'll we'll keep playing around around. So yeah, um Bulbasaur is the I'm always curious when you start a Twitch stream. So like I put the if I want to go out to if I want to start at 10 a.m., I'll make my stream go live at 957 because when you come to my channel, Twitch will serve you ads before we start, right? So I'm not going to that's why I have that buffer. It gives people time to log in and adds to play, and then we start the stream. <clears throat> okay, everyone sounding good? Good. Because I've played, I've done lots of things um, with my audio setup. <laughs> Could you hear that? <laughs> yeah, Twitch will do all kinds of weird notifications. So that, if you're ever wondering why I do a starting screen, um, that's why I don't want to go live. Could you hear the air horns? I don't even know if this stuff, if this stuff works. So that's why I'll do a, yeah, ads don't always come in, but that is why I'll do like a buffer of notification, like pressing the go live button on Twitch and then not starting the stream for a few minutes, just if case, you know. You know, not everyone comes in at the same time, but at least in the beginning, you don't miss the first few minutes. <clears throat> and it is kind of random. Like, I'll go, I'll watch streams, and sometimes I get ads, sometimes I don't. I'm actually getting more ads than ever, it seems like. Um, like, if I switch between Twitch channels, I wouldn't always get ads. But now it's, like, pretty consistent, like, if I'm bouncing around. So, anyway, that's a, that's enough Twitch Twitch talk, but well, we can we can talk more about Twitch because I'm trying. Eventually, you know, maybe a year from now, I might make Twitch partner. But um, you know, I just kind of still like to hear like what y'all's experience is and like how I can figure out to do things. And <clears throat> if you watch an old broadcast every ten minutes, like a like a recorded broadcast, that is rough. Oh, good morning, and tell her, tell her. Uh, Tell Ann I say hi. <laughs> right? Did I, I get the names right? Yeah, I think. I'm pretty sure. We'll, we'll go with that. If not, fail. <laughs> so, I that's that's Tony's default sound whenever Tony talks. So y'all are screwed now that I have this little button thing to. Uh, Interesting. That's crazy, Sarah. So maybe you go watch it on YouTube because if I do forget to put it over like right after, but then at least you'll only have the one ads in the beginning uh, off Twitch. So that's interesting. I had never heard that before. That's pretty quite crazy. <clears throat> so, um, I it feels like Monday morning to me. The easier to follow the comments on Twitch. That makes sense. I get that. I'll buy that. It's probably easier to see too, yeah. So, gotcha. Um, yeah, it feels like Monday morning to me. Uh, yesterday was super busy, and in a good way. Like, just all the things you know, trying to go on yesterday. So I still feel like I'm playing a little catch up today. One of the big things I have to do is get ready for my podcast tonight with Carrie Yeager. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. I'm going to get y'all to help me with questions for Carrie. Don't put them in now. I want to do that towards towards the end. I want to talk about a couple other things um, first, because since I'm going to have Carrie, we'll do mostly talk about him. So I won't have 
current stuff to talk about, like I would normally talk about like the Star Wars pins with Mike, right? Like the new Schaefer ones, we're going to talk about those on here and things like that. And I got an Ajoto pin that I want to talk about. Um, so we'll talk about that here because when I have Carrie on, I, I have gobs of questions. It's been two years, year and a half, two years. Um, we don't have anything on our ballot this time, which is super weird. But um, we had a bunch last year. Go, my man, Pat. Morning, morning, morning. <clears throat> so nothing I had to get out there and, and rock the vote for this year. So let's talk about... Where's my mouse? Let's talk about a Johto for a minute. I'm forgetting my buttons. I got to click. Dun, dun, dun. Where are my buttons? See, I I was um, woof. I was working right up until nine fifty six, knowing at nine fifty seven I was gonna start the uh, start the stream, and I'm still like not completely here yet. <laughs> Let me shrink this down a little bit, even though it might be harder to see. Okay. Um. I'm an Ajoto super fan. Snoochie Boochies. Is that what you got a, an ad for? Mountain Mountain Dew's hot this morning. Big hot on the Mountain Dew. Um, so I'm an Ajoto fan, right? They are extraordinarily expensive. They are outrageously priced. And like I think about this stuff, I definitely don't mean Baron Fig. I Baron Baron Fig's pens are good. Like when that list came out, like that that terrible strategist strategist list came out last year, um, I had no argument with the number one pin being Baron Fig. It was like the other ninety nine <laughs> selections that were tragic, and the idea around it. Um, they're not the ooh, the Baron Fig pin. I think is straighter. Like this has a bulge, like a little bulge out here down towards the grip section. Um, and they're a little shorter, same general idea, right? And like a quarter to a half of the price. Baron fig pens have the bulge. I don't use them, so I wouldn't know. So, um, although I do have a, uh, a, uh, I have an alphabet one. If anyone wants a Baron fig alphabet pen, I'm sure that one's like super rare and, uh, outrageous so if anyone wants it i'm not gonna sell it you can have it i'm not joking I, i'm pretty sure i have it um and i don't want to give it away i don't like i don't i don't know i just don't want to but i'll give it to somebody tell me if you want it you can have it i don't even care <clears throat> hey aurelius let's talk about that I, I i want to specifically talk about that so don't let me forget to to discuss that um yeah, so the Ajoto, I guess I first backed them on Kickstarter a few years back when they launched. Sorry, the cameras. We got the train coming. Um, I think it was I think it was Kickstarter. Is, is that how they got launched? I'm pretty sure. But uh, and I I backed the brass one, and I think at the time it was about a hundred bucks. I could go back and look at this, um, and figure it out, but. I just like the design. It is a very minimalist design. Um, and it was just made very, very well. But yes, as Sarah says, this is really a price consideration thing. This is 160 pounds for the brass. This is their base level pen, right? So full disclosure, like I talk to a Johto pretty frequently. Um, I've paid full price for pens. I've paid discount for pens. They've given me pens. So like I'm all across the board on the products I have. Um, and I don't know, I've just, I've always enjoyed the aesthetic and the style and the way they're built. So recently they came up with ebonite pens and they sent me one to check out. So this is the tiger. What do they call this one? The Tiger Tiger Blue Ebonite. So this is the one I have. Scroll down to that picture, you can see it better. 
So they sent me this one at no charge. And this is almost exactly the opposite feel I have from the Waldman yesterday to where objectively I would never recommend this pen to anyone <laughs> under any circumstances. But subjectively, I love this pen. So, like, these are the th challenges I have had recently with reviewing. This is an ultra-light pen. It's very, very strange feeling. Like, I feel like it's a, um, this is for a Johto super fans only type of pen, which I fall into that category. Like, I would buy, I would buy one. They have, what, like, five of them. Like, this Indigo. So, they have Indigo Ebonite. Sand, Ebonite, Tiger Blue, Blossom. Um, you know, that Indigo looks pretty great. So this is what I want to point out with this. One, it's like 200 pounds, which is what? 230 40 $50. I don't know. I didn't do the conversion. Um, and this is what I didn't understand going into it is the weight of these is 13 grams so you know randomly 13 grams you're like oh that's pretty light but then you go back and look at the brass pen that i've had and it is 55 grams so it's almost it's it's four and a half times was that quick math i don't know if that's good quick math or not four and a half times as heavy this pen is like air it feeling and even when out without the refill good morning miss crafties pringles huh nice so without the refill in it i was like it feels like a straw right like you're picking up a straw from a drink or something like that i was like wow this is weird and then you put the refill in it it gets a little bit heavier but not that much heavier um and it feels better and then I was still like, I, am I gonna, am I even gonna like this at all? And then I started writing with it, and I actually really enjoy the writing feel of it. So it's one of those things, one of these products, where there's absolutely zero chance I could recommend this pen to anybody because I think the price is outrageous even though it might be accurate, right? Those two things can coexist, right? The price can be dumb, but correct, right? So it takes the uh, the Schmidt P81, 27s, 26s, those types of refills. Um, I guess the Parker, Parker style refills. So it would fit that Oto flash drive that I use in my Retro 51s. I guess I, I'm, it may not, because what this does, so they're, um, it may not now that I say it because the way they do this, it's a twist. This is kind of the coolest part. Like even this part is made out of ebonite. And I think this is where, I think this stinking little part here is probably where a lot of the cost in manufacturing comes in. But what they do is they have a hole in the back of this. So it may not fit anything other than the Schmidt refills that have that part that kind of slots in, doesn't really slot in there, but. I guess it just kind of pushes it down right there. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, I don't know. The the mechanism is in ebonite too, which is kind of wild. That surprised me. That even not just the tip part, but the entire screw in part is ebonite. So that's pretty cool. I will have to test the Odo and report back. I don't know that I'll like that needlepoint aesthetic with this pen. Right. So that that was kind of my thought. Or otherwise, I would have put one in here. But number one, I like this refill. Number two, I like the aesthetic with this tip on it. So, um, but yeah, like this is one of those pens I have a like. I don't know that I said I would pay this much. I don't know if I would or not. Um, I would have felt pretty disappointed like when i got it for that price i was like it, there's no substance substance to it like there's no feel to it but when i write with it it feels awesome it's like this is a pen i want to bring around and show to people and i think almost universally people will go like really um 
so I talked to Mike Dudek yesterday about it because he's got one coming. And like the best thing is I can say is is what I've already said, and I said it to him. Like this is a pen strictly for a Johto super fans, right? No one's gonna get into the brand because of this pen, because it's just like crazily priced. Thanks, Tony, leaderboard man. So, um, this is only my second one. I sold my brass one, and then I bought one that they don't have in stock right now. It was a stainless steel one, um, which is probably still my favorite one. A stainless steel with a, like a copper twist on it. Um, and that one was around 200 bucks, I think. Yeah, it was like this stainless model. Um, but had a copper, like a copper or some kind of burned or like flame torched twist mechanism. Good morning, Jesse. So yeah, this is one of those pens that's definitely for me that I like, I enjoy. I don't need too many of them because they're too expensive and I would almost never recommend to anybody um, unless it's a very particular situation. So that's my thoughts on the Johto. We'll talk more about it. I'll end up reviewing this pen most likely. We'll see. Like this is again, it's like that Waldman in review. Um, it's really hard to put into words what I feel about this pen um, because it's one part objective and one part subjective. Um, it also relates to um, the Sailor King of Pen falls into this category, right? I, the the Pro Gear King of Pens I think are just outrageously expensive and overpriced for what they are, yet I enjoy them. So, you know, when I'm coming from a review perspective, it's really, really hard to get my thoughts down. Yeah, Evan, I agree with that. Like, in that specific scenario, it's like, well, I want a rollerball pen, but I don't want what I would consider a classic rollerball pen, say like a Pelican, you know, 600 rollerball. Good morning, Urban. Afternoon, probably for you. Um... So what can I get that's interesting, right? That's a very, very, very tiny market. Um, but um, yeah, I wish I would have brought my, I can't remember the name of the one that I bought, Sunset, Sunrise, Sun, I don't know, something like that. Um, it's really pretty. Um, it's just not on the site right now. So um, back to Aurelius's comment, and I wanted to mention this because I think about this a lot. Aurelius says, sorry, I'm kind of over the extreme minimalist style at this point. And I could not gr agree more from a design perspective. Like, I don't, I like minimal is done, right? It generally. Like, I don't want to minimize people's creativity and design and artwork because I support this, but anyone can make a pen out of a tube right so there's more that has to go into that and this is what we thought this was like our defining um ethos if you will for building spoke pen right it was like we were not going to make a pen whose descriptor could be minimal or minimalist because that's done we felt it was done it was like we can make a tube right and well, we don't want to make a tube. We want to make something different. Um, yeah. So like you're saying, like Ian Schoen's pins, I consider minimalist, but the design is unique enough to where it's interesting. Um, same with Michael. Um, you know, there can be a minimal idea to it, but then bring something else to the table. Um, it's a lot of, you know, it's just, <clears throat> it's time, and I think people like Ian have done it, it's time to step up that minimalism to something more more unique. Because, like like I said, I keep calling it just a two, but you know what the pens I'm talking about, right? I, don't even, I can't even name any, but you know the design, just the basic, I mean, a Johto is generally a tube, right? But, you know, they've added different... Um, mechanism tweaks and different things like that and use different materials but um i get what you're saying and that's why when we did spoke like n no part of that pen is minimal at all and so you know that was kind of our 
our thing. You still want a pen type B. Like, would you consider the pen type B to be a minimalist pen? I mean, aesthetically speaking, I guess it's extreme minimalism, right? Like, it's a, literally a tube, like I was talking about. But not everyone can make this, right? Not everyone has the machining capabilities to pull this off, even though the actual structure of the pen itself is monstrously minimal. Like it is the epitome of, of minimal almost. It's a straight tube. Um, but is that minimal? That's challenging, right? So I guess I would describe it as a minimal pen. But uh, Rot Ring Core is the, is the anti-minimalist pen. Yeah, so this minimal. This is why I wanted to bring this up. This minimal conversation is is cool. There is a like a uh, I don't know, like a dividing line. There's if minimal as the forefront of your marketing, and interesting or unique is second in the marketing. That's not where I'm at right now. I need it to be flipped. It can be minimal. But what interesting and unique aspects are you bringing to that, right? It can be both. I, I believe it can be both. And the, like the pen type B, I think is both, right? So, um, and I get that from a Johto, uh, or I should point this way. I get that from a Johto, but I understand like that's even more of a minimal thing. <laughs> yeah, the technical skills, right? Making a tube and putting a refill in it doesn't excite me. But what can you show me that you did differently and in an interesting way to make me go, oh, I want that minimal looking pen. So, yeah, it's a good conversation to have. Um, and it's always a balance. And, you know, it's a term that can be overused clearly. So, you know, it's cool. It is cool. So yeah, I love having like those types of conversations. Whoo, a knob. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fancy knob though, at least. Um, so yeah, like, you know, it, uh, it definitely kind of cuts both ways. FC 20 is minimal, but built around the slip cap. Yeah. Like we could talk about like all kinds of different things. So. Yeah, so the Muji, I'm just looking back at JBK's um, comment about Muji. It's a, Muji is a little bit like Evan's comment about Apple. It's like the, it's interesting what's on the inside in some cases, right? Muji makes a bare bones minimal outside, but they have chosen to use exceptionally good insides for the pens with uh, Uniball, Zebra, Pentel, Pilot, I think even maybe everybody, all the big ones. So yeah, and that's what Apple does well, minimal on the outside, um, exceptional on the inside. So, <clears throat> all right, so that's my Ajoto thoughts. That's a, uh, I'm not quite on an island on this one, but uh, it's close. Like it's definitely not a pen for, for everybody, nor would I recommend it to almost anybody. It's gonna be very, very particular situation so based on last week's star wars platinum conversation we have to look at this week's uh schaefer release right so i didn't pull this up before so i should have found the link do we have the new ones easily yeah welcome hi i don't want to say if thank you schaefer though do they have them can we sort by new? All right, that worked. So these were the, the pens that I related the Star Wars Platinum to. Oh, last point on minimal. There is a difference between minimal and just plain that a lot of people miss. It's a good point. And I think a lot of us us we will 
look at, we understand minimal. We've learned what the value is in the design and can make a judgment on, you know, is this pen basic or plain? Is it offering me something besides that in minimalism? Or is it asking me, or am I, or am I seeing something more in the minimalism? That's going to be interesting. The Platinum, the Platinum Mall is better. Uh, the Platinum Mall is the best. Oh, yes, Link. So, always yell at me to put links in because as soon as I bring them up, I always forget. And it's already pre-sorted there. Yeah, that is, I don't think that's a hot take, Evan. I think the Platinum Darth Maul is killer and everything else is kind of flat. So, yes, thank goodness Ray gets a pen, right? Now, unfortunately... Ray's movie aesthetic doesn't lend to stunning pens, right? But I would still almost buy it just out of support because her character is just so important and so great. Let's see. I'm trying to bring this up a little bit. Yeah, no Leia than any of them. That would actually might be my first purchase. Leia. I want to look at this Skywalker pen. So I haven't looked at these yet. So I've just uh, I've just kind of pulled these up. But this is the pen where I brought up the Darth Vader that I reviewed before. It's a fantastic $20 pen. Like, I wouldn't hesitate to get this. I actually might, what I might do is I might get my kids the Ray pens. Um, because I know Tyler's a big Ray fan. Um, that's probably what I'll end up doing, like, for Christmas or something. I'll get them. I might get them both the Ray pen. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's go back. So and so they're twenty four dollars. And here's the Luke pen, which this is. Um, yeah, the Star Wars aesthetic. Yeah, I agree. That's what. That's why the. Uh, that's why all the the droid pens do the best. You know, Sam totally agree. The droid pens, the droids allow for great designs, and why Platinum didn't choose at least one uh, of the three main ones. Uh, I, I'm a little, I don't, I don't know why. So this Luke, I mean, this is OG. This is like Empire, like Luke flight suit, isn't it? Right. I mean, I don't care. It's but. Like, isn't, like, didn't he bust out the orange? It wasn't even in, like, New Hope. It was, like, an Empire or Jedi, maybe? I don't even know. I could be wrong. I'm not a total Star Wars historian. But, uh, I, I, I mean, it's orange. Of course I like it. This, the name, why why do we have to, uh, I, yeah, the name kind of takes away a little bit for it, from it. But I think overall, this is a pretty great design, right? The flight suit. Um, It's pretty cool. Uh, the, actually, the Skywalker looks better when it's uh, when it's capped. <laughs> Imagine a Montegrappa droid style pen like the Chaos pen. I, I would, I might have to do like a thing if that happened. I don't know. I couldn't use it. the The Chaos style I could use, but like the the Game of Thrones styles, um, the Winter is Winter is here. Um, you know. Montegrappa's throwing cash around. Why they haven't done the Star Wars stuff before? St. Dupont does it, right? They did the X-wing fighter. So yeah, Luke looks pretty good. These are the same design. Okay, well there's yeah, that's the suit I was looking. The picture I was looking for. These are the same barrel design as the Vader one I reviewed on the blog, and it I just think it's great. Like it's really comfortable, and fun. And like it writes well, like shockingly well. Um, I think the Schaefer cartridges are proprietary. Schaefer cartridges are proprietary, though. If I'm not mistaken, y'all can correct me if I'm I'm wrong. Um, after the Viking, uh, bonjour, Anna. Yeah, this one, this one's a little bit tacky. I think 
whereas the Darth Maul for the Platinum, I think, was as classy as, as an evil person can be. I thought the Platinum Darth Maul was good. They are Schaefer carts are proprietary. That's what I was thinking. So that would be, I haven't used the Darth Vader pen. I probably gave it to the kids or something. Um, but I would just cartridge, I've been syringe fill a cartridge, I guess. Um, this does at least have the dark plating on the clip. That's kind of nice. But everything, I mean, this looks to me, this looks like uh, Darth Maul Karate Kid Edition or something like that. Like it doesn't totally work for me, um, especially compared to the platinum design, right? This is a little hot topic-y for me. I think that's more what it is. Like they, I think they tried too hard on this one, right? They could have done, you know, this is, it's got the cross angle lightsaber, right? Where Ray's, uh, Ray's, um, what do, I don't know what you call her weapon. I, I don't want to call it a stick, but, um, you know what I'm talking about? It's, uh, it's directly horizontal and all the other, oh, here's Kylo. Whoops. Let's not do this. Kylo's saber is horizontal. Oh, there's a Death Star one. Oh, that might be the one I get. Look at that. You know, everything is horizontal here in the lines and the angles. And then they threw the uh, double-ended saber of Darth Maul at an angle across the barrel. And I don't think it looks as good as the rest of them. So here's Kylo Ren's. Medium nib on those is a fire hose, but it's smooth. Totally agree. No, Hot Topic is like a cheesy store in the U.S. where you get all the, it's like a swag. It's like a teenager high school swag store. <laughs> I guess, but they could have shortened it. I mean, they didn't even put the hilt on, uh, on, on Kylo's. Like, right? It just starts right above the, the split. It doesn't even have the hilt on it. So they could have, I think they could have, they could have run it the whole length of the barrel. Yeah, back in my day, it was Spencer's, right? Y'all remember Spencer's? Uh, that was pre-Hot Topic. What does this say on the back? Sorry, I'm flipping through this fast. What is this word? Why is it not why is it not readable? Manic panic. C R U What is this word? C R U This is going to bother me, guys. Help me. You're my only hope. C R U S H it looks like crush, a crunk. <laughs> why is this not shown? We got to we got to look at another Kylo Ren. We got to look at the ballpoint or something to see if they have it in here. Commander Salamander. Crud. <laughs> Spencer still exists, huh? Crazy. All right. Oh, yeah, here's the back side of it. This says stance S T A N C E. Crush stant. I'm at a loss. Oh, crush the resistance? You think that would wrap all the way around? That's got to be right, though, right? Tony, you would do good at um, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> yeah, so crush and stance. So crush the resistance. You think that fits on the barrel? This is really bothering me, y'all, if you couldn't tell. Is there another one? That's got to be it. Crush the re Crush the resistance. What's up, Groovy Times? <laughs> right on cue. All right. I think this might be the winner. I think this might be the pen I get, and I'll get the kids Ray pens. I like, I like this design. I like this one a lot. Um, I like because I like gray and green. Um, that's pretty slick. 
Oh no, what does it say here? It's a... Uh, please let it say it's a trap. Nope, it's a, it's an S. It's a S. Star Destroyer? What does it say? It's a S. It's a space station. Okay. Oh, this has quotes all over it. Oh, does it have... What's the one? That's no... That's no planet? What does it say? Or that's no space station. Yeah, this one looks this one looks dope. That's no moon. Let's see if the ballpoint shows it a little better. I wish they'd show these. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, yeah, that's no moon. It's a space station. That's no moon, it's a space station. Or both the quotes. I, out of the new batch, that's my favorite. Um, the Luke's pretty good. The Ray's pretty good. I do not like the Darth Maul and the Kylo. It's just kind of meh. Kylo's kind of boring. His 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 mask is behind the clip. Is that how this is working? Is there a clear shot of this? Yeah, his mask is hidden behind the clip. Like, that mask is like an iconic design. The Death Star one isn't new? That's not from the new batch? Then I missed it before. Then I still might have to buy that one. Maybe I'll buy Luke. Yeah, this is a bit of a letdown. Yeah, Kylo's mask is behind the clip. Uh-oh, stream is stuck. Let me pull up my stats. Oops, stats look good here. It's just you. <laughs> So, um, Kylo, a bit of a letdown. So, Death Star was before. Okay, cool, cool. Did not, then I totally missed the Death Star one. I think I stopped at BB-8, Yoda, R2. Didn't realize that. I like that, though. So, yeah, it's like 24 bucks. It's pretty cool. I like them. You know, I think I don't mind the quotes, but this Luke Skywalker one is actually the most annoying to me. Just like blam. Bit of a letdown, but affordable price. That's fair. Yeah, I think that Luke Skywalker text is worse than the quotes on the other pens. So anyway, compared to Platinum, like, if Platinum could run a pen like this, like, I, instead of just an all-white pen with a terrible quote and a racing stripe for a lightsaber, that'd be a lot better. I don't know. Well, beggars can't be choosers, right? I guess I should just be glad they're doing Star Wars pens for the most part. All right. Who sells Schaefer? Uh, I got mine from Gold Spot last year. The, when I got the Vader one, I got it from Gold Spot. I'm sure there's some others. I'm anxious to see the Platinum in person. Not that it's going to sway me to to buy one, but I'm going to see at least see the Darth Maul in person. Gold Spot's nice people. Disclosure, advertiser on the blog. I feel like I should say that. Nib Wars. Great name. Thanks for the sub. I appreciate you. Anderson's just sent out an email. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, Michael was saying. That's true. You could get these, these at like the brick and mortars. Office Depot, Staples, Office Max, things like that. Definitely can get that. Get it local-ish. But um, Gold Spot, I don't. Think, I think Steven did a video. They've asked me to do a video for um, an upcoming promotion they're doing, and I think I'm probably going to do it. Um, yeah, Platinum, look those up. They're pretty crazy. Um, some are crazy bad. Um, one or two are crazy good. The nibs are spectacular looking. The design, nib designs are great. 
Um, so yeah, they look pretty cool. How much are they at Office Depot? I imagine 24 because that sailor's, sailor's site is full MSRP and that was 24. So I would imagine that's that's the price at um, at the box office stores. Box office stores, big box stores. Box office movies, big box pens. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if the pen retailers get any kind of discount or are allowed to put any kind of discount. I swear I paid like 20 for mine, but I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Who knows? Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about something. Oh, I was talking about the gold spot video. I think I'm going to do like this product video for them. Um, Star Wars gets its own Kabuki stage play. That'd be pretty dope. That's wild. So yeah, I need to pick out like my favorite products of the year and do like a 10 minute video. So I think I'm gonna try to do a video recording uh, maybe Thursday, either before or after the stream. I don't know if I can do it during the stream. I mean, technically I could and just clip it all out, remove all this stuff from the screen. But I think I'm gonna do that, which is something I never do. Like, a, I don't, like I'm gonna have to script it, but I, like I need to plan for it, so I don't know. We'll worry about that tonight or tomorrow, and I'll figure it all out. Um. All right, let's. Um. Oh, thanks for the bits, Exinio Mundus, Ex Nihilio Mundus. Okay, so can y'all explain this handle to me? Like, do I need to know? Because I don't know what it means, and I don't know if I'm saying it right. I'm most likely saying it wrong, but. Uh, but if Mary likes it, then I should probably like it too because she's cool. Um, but I don't know what it means. <clears throat> okay, so that's a Slack notification on my watch. All right, sidebar time. So Slack notifications are... Mongo Slade, thanks for the sub. I appreciate you. You're awesome. Um, Slack notifications are kind of like the worst. Oh, it's Latin for out of nothing the world. Dang, that is fantastic. Approved. I like it. Um, Slack notifications are notably terrible, right? If you go into your Slack settings and try to manage notifications, it's so bad that they have a button that says troubleshoot notifications. If you're having to put troubleshoot, here's another one. <laughs> Damn it, Tony. <laughs> now that I get notifications from. But what I get now, just magically, is when someone requests an invite to Slack, I send them and they sign up, I get a notification on my phone that says such and such has joined Slack. This just started yesterday. I've emailed Slack and they sent me a reply and I got to go through these steps that they've said. They're like, oh, that shouldn't be happening. I'm like, no joke, that shouldn't be happening. But your notification system is so screwed up, you have to have a button to troubleshoot notifications in your app. That's a, that's like a, hey, I, you know, pro tip, it's not working well. Like if you have to have that as part of your app design is to troubleshoot notifications. <laughs> That's what I think about Slack notifications. So there. Oh, can we test something out before we talk about uh, my podcast with Carrie tonight? Uh, let's see. Does this button make my voice sound make my voice sound funny? Do I talk funny when I push this button like this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how these buttons work. I gotta figure out how to test them out. I can't test them so I can hear them. What does this button do? Did that do anything? Did that do anything? Okay, now tell me if this button mutes it. Did that button mute my voice at all? Probably not. Yeah, so I gotta figure out how, I heard the chirp sound, so this is all the buttons I gotta figure out. But I mean, I got the important stuff, right? Yeah, that's all that matters. All right, so no mute, no, modification i'll work on that this is all stuff i gotta spend time on to to work um 
we talked about emotes recently and I've decided what I want to do. And I have four emote slots I can use. And I thought I might do four individual ones, but I think I'm going to do a hype train one and we'll do it in a, with a pen design. So four sections of a pen, say, say for example, like a, a Pelican M205. So we'll have like a nib, two barrel sections, and then an end section, uh, a cap. So we'll just have like a, a HYPE pen hype train, I think is what I'm going to do for the four emotes. So, you know, you can use them individually, but that'd be kind of silly, but we can run, you can click all four and make a hype train on it and make a, um, but do it like as a pen design where the nib will be the engine. So that'll be cool. You know, at least in my head, that'll be cool. <laughs> it may not be cool at all <laughs> in my head. It sounds cool. So I'm pretty happy about that. Oh gosh. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's still like a month out. I'm like, when I signed up to this artist queue, uh, con that do, did this other artwork for me, he was like, yeah, I'm like two months in the queue. I'm like, okay, just put me down. I'm not in a rush. So that'll be good. Yep. It'll be four parter like that. So we'll get a little, little hype train fountain pen. Maybe the pen will be small and skinny on the bottom and then the HYP up top, something like that. So you can at least see, see it. We'll have to see, we'll let the designer do his work. Um, and we'll get the pen attic hype train going. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be good for my next four, four emotes. So, all right. So this week's podcast, Mike is off, um, on Wednesday. And I asked Carrie Yeager of Fountain Pen Day and more importantly, Kenro Industries to join me as a guest. We are recording tonight. We will not be live. There will not be a live episode this week. Uh, sorry, everyone who likes to listen live on Wednesday mornings. Um, we will not be recording live at all this week. But I'm going to talk to Carrie tonight. So what I want to know is what you want to know from Carrie, either about Kenro Industries, um, all the products they are distributors of. Oh, that came out good, Re Whistles. Uh, Tony would like to submit all the titles to Tony to pick one out. I'll do that. Not really, but um, we'll think about it. I won't. Um, and Fountain Pen Day stuff we're going to talk about. He has been traveling a bunch to pen shows. We're going to talk about pen shows. So if you have any um, specific questions that you can think of here, let me know. If you think of it later, let me know on Twitter, email, something like that. Um, that's fine too, but we're going to record at like 7.30 tonight. So what do you want to know from from Carrie if, if you have if anything? Um, did he launch his pen, the, the Van S pen? Did that launch for Fountain Pen Day? Yes, no, maybe. I'm pretty sure. Okay, it did. How did it do? It looked pretty cool. I liked it. I didn't buy it, but it looked good. Is it sold out? There it is. Come back, come back. Nope. There it is. Yeah, so it's like a white, white and orange, which is of course great. Eighty-eight pins. Looks like it's still available. Yeah. How does he pick the button colors? That's a that's a great question. <laughs> so nice to do that something on paper thanks for the sub i appreciate you nine months that's awesome so carrie is like an interesting dude there's so many different ways we can go i of course want to talk to him a bunch about the businessy side of what ken rose doing what they're doing with esther brook as a brand what they're doing with their other brands that they carry but i want questions like what sarah asked like that's perfect it's 
Sorry, I got to write these down. So I'm going to have a whole list of notes for him. <laughs> the nitty gritty details of the grocery store. I don't want to give him PTSD. Sorry, that's not going to happen. Let him know that the matte black button was great. I will. I'm going to write that down. He's so nice, but my first show was overwhelmed. He's so nice. He handed me these crazy Stilo art pens. I'm going to ask him about those Stilo art pits, pens because I was, uh, number one, he is that nice uh, all the time. Uh, number two, I helped him buy the eggshell Stilo art pen um, by buying uh, other pens out of his collection so he could afford it. <laughs> so here's the, the FC pen. Oh, he's got a Rodden M1000. Wow. It's hard to see the engraving on here, but it looks great. Let's see if I can get a picture. Yeah, you can't see it at all, most likely. Yeah, so that was San Francisco three years ago. Um, he saw this pen. He had to have it. And he had some other pens he was willing to sell that I was interested in. And I bought them off of him so he could go buy the eggshell pen. And he just loves that pen so much. It was super cool. And I got pens that I love so much too. I got the orange bung box vanishing point and I've got the uh, green mosaic king of pen, which that's, that's me. That's what I want. I would have bought the 31 of the orange bit had a little something else going on. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I would have bought it if I needed more pens, but I don't. I I made I pulled my pins to sell y'all, I got them. Now I just gotta write them up. Nineteen of them. We're gonna go with nineteen the first batch, and I'm pretty sure I can do another batch that's at least, you know, ten or fifteen more. Um, I had to stop at some point. Okay, let me write down some of these questions. Cause we will definitely talk about like his personal collection type stuff. Yeah, but what you see from Carrie, if you've just met him for the first time, is what you get. He's just like genuinely a great dude. Yes, Sarah, I'm doing it. I have to do it. I have to do it. I bought an expensive pen. I can't afford the expensive pen unless I sell some other pens. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm writing all these down. What is your favorite of the Aurora 100th anniversary inks and pens? Okay. Yeah, the 31 is actually not my favorite style. That was the first 31 I bought, um, even supposing. And I like it. Like I, I just prefer some of their other models better. So like I'm good with the one. I'm glad I bought it. I use it regularly, and I don't need some more. So, hey, the, the tray sitting on my desk. I have the notes that I've started to write um, so I can write the product descriptions right here. Starting to write like individual product notes. Um, they, I just, I gotta figure out the pricing. Like I will, um, you know, I will, all of these pens will be very reasonably priced. I don't like try to do something crazy. Um, like there was already a, like a Lamy Bauhaus on 
I saw on Reddit the other day and it was like 600 bucks. It's like, well, don't, don't do that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's not my jam. Um, I'm going to keep that 31. Like I, I did it for a reason so I could have one, but I probably won't be adding any more. If I ever do decide to sell it, you'll be the first to know because the color is pretty cool. I really like the, the cool. How do you become a Twitch mod? <laughs> you got to ask the Twitch mod. Um, I missed something. Favorite Aurora. Please post the sale on a morning. Uh, a morning my time, I'm assuming, because you're like eight hours ahead of me, seven hours ahead of me. Um, I, I don't, there's, I never know what the good thing is to do about that. Right. I think you have to get rid of the current Twitch mod. That could be arranged. So it's like, you know, do I do the sale? Yeah, let you, that's what I'll probably do is probably do like a one or two day in advance thing. I tried to put up the Bix and Sharpies yesterday and I had them all done and the images wouldn't scale right. So you couldn't see them in the previews. Um, and then I ran out of time to fix those yesterday. So I'll, I'll figure that out. I also need to see if I'm going to do the Bix in the, uh, in a pack, right? So the Sharpies are $2. The Bix are, they were either $1.40 or $1.50. Um, should I do like a three or five pack of the Bix and do a little bit of a discount? Pinatic members discount will count on those too. So at some point, like it, they're so small, like this is not to make money off of, but it's just like a fun thing to do. So, like, what would three, you could do like three for four dollars. They're a dollar fifty each. That's four fifty. Then I could do three for four dollars, something like that. So, three pack. Yeah. Probably do something like that. And then, yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. I'm so happy with those pens. So I just need to put that line item in. Um, but really, all I have to do, like I've sized the picture um, correctly. I think I might just need to delete them and start from fresh, even though I did that once too. But it's going to bother me just visually. I could put them up and people could click through and they could see the whole thing fine. But something was about it was bothering me. So I'm going to work on that after stream before I go pick up the kids. I'll probably try, look for them. I'll launch those this afternoon. Oh, uh, there. How are the Kakuyo notebooks coming? There is progress. Um, I have the contact. Um, it's going to require a Japanese credit card, a Japanese shipping address, and then a ship to the U.S. shipment. Um, and I have the artwork. And I have everything picked out. So now we're about to work on placing the order. My worry is in the end, they're going to be expensive um, relative to what you could get the normal ones for. But that's just how it's going to have to be. I'm going to get like 300 of them and I might have to charge a decent amount for them. Like it's going to cost me hundreds of dollars in shipping just to get them here. So, um, yeah so they're coming i'm still gonna do it i just don't they're not gonna be like a deal you know but i will be super thrilled with with them if they come out good like the shipping quotes i've got if i get 300 books shipping will be almost like a dollar a book it'll be like between two and three hundred dollars to ship I still want to do it though. So what do these normally cost? What are the plain sketch notebooks cost? Just standard plain in the US. What do they cost? Can you pull me something up real quick? You can probably do it faster than I can. But they're inexpensive. They're like four dollars or something like that. They're not expensive at all. So with the logo and the shipping costs and the small quantity I have to order, it's gonna be price. And I wouldn't be surprised if what I have to charge is double what they normally charge so 
So five dollars. I'm guessing mine are gonna be like eight to ten dollars. Maybe maybe closer to eight. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't done all the math. Just know that it's gonna be more than five dollars for a fact. So we'll see. I still want to do it. I'm still going to do it. I just think that'll look cool with the logo. I don't think I'm going to have the lines on the logo, though. I think I'm just going to have the circle and the pen, um, which I've been doing recently on logos and stamping. It seems to be a little bit cleaner. Um, I've got the artwork both ways. We'll see what the sample looks like. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not worried about them. It just... Uh, the cost ramps up pretty quick <laughs> when you kind of have to do this dance to get the thing. So, yeah, I've been digging the no lines in some of the some of the way the artworks looked. It's it's pretty clean. It's pretty sharp. Um, let's see. Do I have this? Is only on my phone. It'll even pull up. Yeah, it's not going to let me pull it up on my phone. But yeah, I mean, you know what it looks like. Um, It's a great pocket notebook, isn't it? Because it's still, it's firm, but it's still flexible enough to kind of get out of the way and don't really stress out over them. All right, even supposing, have a good one. Thanks. I'm glad you like the streams. I love doing them. Uh, I've been feeling really good about the schedule recently. Like, it makes me, like, stick to something. I like it. Yeah, so I can't, um, I can get all those colors, Tony, but at double or triple the cost. Are they the same price? Are they the same $5? Or are they more expensive? Like, I can get anything I want, but if if it's not green the price goes up exponentially. So there's even some that cost like $10, like my cost. I can get a style or my cost would be like $10. Like they can make some really stupid expensive ones. So, I mean, it's fine. I, I, I want the basic, I want the classic anyway, at least for the first shot. And then if it goes well, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> We'll see how it goes, but I, I like, I, I it's just such a good design. It's so classic, so classic. Sixty anniversary ones. <clears throat> Are they just blank, just blank pages? Camel drags. I, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Hey, be kind. I love that. That is definitely a focus of mine. Be kind, have fun, smile, do good, do right by other people, all the things. Have a good day at work. Be kind, rewind. Remember video stores, chat? Remember when you'd go and rent the video? Remember when you'd go on the big release and like an entire wall of the store would be like the 200 copies they got of like, I don't know, the Terminator or whatever, you know, whatever hot VHS release was, man. Whew. And then poof. Yeah. And then they were all gone. Like they were all rented. And before the policy of before you could have the quick like one or two day rental, they were all for like five day rental. So you didn't know when they were coming back in at all. Man, stupid. Gumbo man, Pat, thanks for the sub. I appreciate you. You're awesome. Yeah, that was the worst. And then remember when you were a kid, they had that one room with like the cloth over the door in the video room. Oh, no. Was that it? Do I remember that? I don't remember that. I had the curtain. I couldn't go in that room. Yeah. But yeah, like, I it was always the worst feeling. It's like, you have 200 of these. Why can't I get one? Oh, man. Oh, different video store. 
Miles to rent VHS tapes. Absolutely. The things we used to do. And now we're like super spoiled. It's now it's like now you have all the access and you don't want to watch anything, right? So that's that's kind of how I am now. That wasn't that long ago. Wasn't that long ago at all. So yeah, video stores. Man, 37 years ago. Mm. Calligraphy nut, thank you. We had to work for our entertainment. Absolutely. I was listening to um, the talk show, which is uh, John Gruber, Daring Fireball, Fireball's tech podcast. And uh, he was talking about going to the, how big of a deal it was when he was a kid. Him and I are about the same age. I think maybe exactly about how big of a deal it was when he was a kid, like a teenager to go to the movies, like to anti to have the anticipation for a movie release with your friends and going to the theater, how much of a big deal it was like when you were you know, a kid. My kids don't have that. Like we go to the movies sometimes, but it's not this anticipation thing anymore. Um, like of you know making sure all your friends' schedule was open so we could go do the go to the movies and like you know just sit there and just in awe of what we were seeing. And like my kids don't have that feeling um, about that anymore. There's no like anticipation at the movie theater because they can watch whatever they want at the house now um it's like buying concert tickets before kick ticket master yeah going to the movies is more of a pita yeah i guess it is oh yeah those vcrs hundreds i i know i didn't spend a thousand dollars but i know i spent multiple hundred dollars on a vcr and the gymnastics you would go through to set a recording schedule for tv shows oh my gosh like can you imagine and then like the accidental did you did you record over the thing Ugh. remember calling the theater yes oh my god i forgot about that but yeah you'd call and you just have to sit there and wait until they landed on the movie you wanted them to that you were looking for the times for oh god Man, Schmevelin, thanks so much. Appreciate you. You're the best. Oh my gosh. First VCR with wired remote. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, wired remotes were the worst. What were we thinking? Uh, oh yeah. Um. VCR programming is like um, family tech support is these days, right? Like, hey, my computer's broken. That's that's the new. Hey, will you program my VCR? That was like, that was like some calculus level stuff. Just trying to get all that right. <clears throat> and I just remember, like, this is not that long ago. This is really not. <clears throat> yep. Oh my gosh. Never had laser discs. Uh, some of my friends did. That was pretty wild. Like the big ones, like the ones that are like this. God, we are all old. Or, yeah. Oh man, all the hoops and all the wires and the switches on the back of the TV and everything had to be plugged in the right right way it was a mess mimeograph machines and modems i saw i don't know who posted it, it might have been president and correct if y'all don't follow that twitter account that's one i recommend president and correct the stationary store in london but they always post like random stuff they post an auction of um what's the uh what were the uh what were the not the iron on sheets but like the uh you know the letter the lettering um uh, starts with an s and i'm blanking that field notes did um that whole series on where you get like a sheet of letters and then you can just like rub them off not carbon paper you rub off it's pre-printed letters but then you like scrape them off onto the thing it starts with an uh i'm blanking i can find it y'all will know it before i can think of it um not it was transfer sheets but they had a name there was like the brand name 
Now I'm losing my mind. What was that field note? They're like rub on letters, but there's a name, they're the brand name for them. It's exactly what it is, but I'm just trying to think of the name. Anyway, my whole point is, it was like an old collection. Um, it was about like refrigerator size of the entire set of these letters. It was like $9,000, but it was like a vintage set from like the 80s from like a, I don't know, like a print shop or something. It was, uh, it was crazy. Letter set. Maybe that's what I'm thinking, letter set. I think that's the, uh, that's the word. It didn't start with an S. But it was like a, it was like a refrigerator sized thing with all the pages of that letter set. Thank you. See, I was going down the wrong path. Uh, see if I can find the link. Yep, here we go. Letra set. Yes, set, set, set. Like, I find this stuff wild. I was close. I was close in my head. Oh, it wasn't $9,000. 900 sheets. It sold for $4,300. <laughs> That's just so cool. Anyway, those are the things I stumble on on the internet. So field notes probably, I guess they had to get theirs custom made. Okay, WH Smith sell their own brand of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Like field notes, I guess, work with whoever to just make custom sheets for everybody when they did that set. That was a pretty wild set. Like I didn't like it at the time or didn't care for it at the time, didn't need that. But it ended up being pretty cool. Like people did some cool stuff with that. I really liked it. <clears throat> all right y'all before I, I i close this carry topic y'all have any uh have anything typesetting those was a pain in the butt I, I i can't even imagine attempting that like that just seems an exercise in frustration right it's just gotta be <laughs> So y'all have any more questions for Carrie? I'll, I'll close the notebook down. If you think any, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm going to work on my show prep later. <clears throat> so I, um, at your recommendation, we talked about games. I downloaded the Untitled Goose game. I didn't realize Panic made that. That's pretty cool. I like them. They do cool stuff. So should we play that on stream? Not today, but like maybe we should do that like Thursday, like after we do stationary talk, play uh, play the goose game on stream. What is that? A, would that be a fun stream game? Like, is it silly and funny? Like we can do stupid stuff on it and have a good stream on that. Be an obnoxious goose. Yeah, it seems pretty cool. So I downloaded that. Um, so maybe we'll try. Yeah, Thursday should be good. Um, we can do like a random stationary chat and then we can jump in the goose and go honk, honk stuff, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it seemed pretty fun. So that looks like a fun fun stream game. One of these days I'm gonna bore y'all with Destiny. I've been playing a lot at home, we will definitely do that. All right, what else do we need to talk about today? I. Um, I ordered my jet pins November stuff so we'll have an unboxing probably next week um, which would be good to do the goose on Thursday because yeah it will not be here for Thursday so maybe the next Tuesday we'll do unboxing uh, jet pins stuff uh, did I copy interview carry while we both play the untitled goose game that would be dope I totally want to do like just have people on on twitch uh like this what was your super expensive super little what's your super expensive super secret pin purchase i can't tell you until i sell some pins which that's another thing i'll do this week 
before the weekend, I will have that up. I didn't even tell Mike. Mike, he's like, he's like, tell me, he's like, tell me what pen you bought. I'm like, no. <laughs> he got so mad. He's like, you're not going to tell me? I said, I'm not. Like, I'm holding myself accountable. I am not. So here's going to be the rule, which whenever, whenever, whenever it shows up, this is going to be the rule. Sotheby score no. <laughs> um, when I get the box, I am not going to open it. So anyone can call me out and I'll do like, you know, I'll put, I'll write like a little card with a date and time on there to show that I haven't opened it. Um, when will I announce it? Once I sell 10 pens. So I have 19 I'm going to put up later this week. And once I sell 10 of them, I'll be able to ink up and use this pen. It's not even in my house yet. It's got to be delivered. Um, but I'm not even going to open the box to look at it. Um, and like, you know, in the end, it's probably going to be like, I don't think it'll be a letdown, but like, it's not, it's not like it's stupid, but like in the best way possible and it, it's stupid in the amount of money. It's not stupid in like the pen design Aureus, I have to do it. Like, this is the only way I can do it. Like to justify how much I spent on this pen, this other stuff has got to go. And I'm only going to do it if I commit to myself, like, publicly to, like, do it. So this box will be sitting there. Um, I don't even have an ETA on it. I mean, it's a stock item, so it shouldn't be long. I just had to get the correct nib size, um, which they didn't have in the shop. <clears throat> so I checked yesterday to see when I should expect it. But that's why I'm just going to go ahead and get these pens out there and hopefully sold. Um and then I can just open it up and go. Um, so yeah, it's a pen I've looked at for probably two years, at least a year and a half, um, that I have picked up on many occasions and then put it down because of the price. The price is, is dumb, but I knew, I knew I was at a point where I needed to sell a bunch of pens. So maybe that's kind of a, a, a way to, to do it. I'm doing something simpler, similar. I have things I keep putting off, so I sign them all point values. I have to earn a certain number of points to be able to purchase any pin over $100. That's great. I think it's good to have. You could, we got to have some kind of restraint in this hobby, right? Hey, Sherry. <laughs> keep lurking. It's okay. I appreciate you. I'm glad you glad you stopped by and said hi. Um, We're having fun talking secret pins. But, yeah, like this hobby can get out of hand if you don't show some modicum of, of restraint and I'm not really good at that. Um, so yeah, I have, this is when I do something this big, it has to be in conjunction with something else. So we'll see. So I, I think you'll like it. I very much like it. Um, The only hint, I'll give you one hint. I don't think it'll give it away. Um, I saw someone I follow on Instagram post this pin this week, and I was surprised. So. Surprised to see it. So just so you know, I follow like 4,000 people on Instagram, so it might be kind of tough for you. I need to fix that one of these days. <laughs> the nudie branch. Mm. Have you gotten any of those, Jesse? <clears throat> those are very cool. Purple one, nice. Yeah, I've got, I'm selling, I have two sailors I'm selling, um, and I feel good about it. Like, I'm very, very happy with the sailors I use, so might as well sell the sailors I don't use. And they're really good pens. Oh, I also cleaned the, uh, Tony, we were talking about the Imperial Black nib, the way that nib looked in pictures, and I took it apart, cleaned it. It looks fine now. I don't know what, I don't know what that was. 
I wonder if I just didn't let it dry or something last time. I don't know. Seems fine now. I may eventually sell that one too, but not in this first batch. That one I got to think on a little bit more. I really like that, how that barrel feels. That's pretty cool. Probably not going to sell that or the Luster. I haven't switched the Luster over to the 4AM though. I may do that after I go through this, this uh, ink. We'll see. See which way out. See which version I like of the pen I like better, and then uh, then I'll keep it one way or the other. We'll see. I'll probably leave it the same, but I'm interested in trying it at least. See what happens. Um, <clears throat> FC Pocket Forty. I think I'm selling the Forty Five. It's ha it's the small pocket slip cap. And it's got a little taper on the cap. I think it's a 45, not a 40. I don't think I have a 40. I think the 40's longer. Jesse, you would know. 45's have threads. Then maybe mine has threads. Hmm. I'll have to see. I'm definitely selling... Uh, no 20 pockets. So it's got two full size 20s, though. Yeah, 20p is a thing. I have one. 20p is great. I like it better than the full size 20. So I'm selling the two of the full size 20s and keeping, I think I have one pocket 20. God. Let's see if I have it on Instagram. I mean, it's year. I bought it at Chicago the last time I was at Chicago. It was when they launched it. It's an IPO one. Oh, I took pictures of it. Never mind. I can show you, and you can tell me which one it is. All right, see, I've already got the pictures done. Okay, it's a forty-five. It's a forty-five because it says it on the cap. I know you can't see that through my phone on there, but it's a 45 threaded. This is an awesome pen. I just don't use it. I use the 66 mostly for the pocket. <clears throat> you see, I started taking all the pictures to put up for sale. So it's really going to happen. Um, it'll be on my website. I'll have a uh, for sale page. I, I bring up and down when I have like personal products to sell, like the pens. So we'll probably do it this weekend. I This is just a lot of uh, description writing, and I haven't priced anything yet. Um, I generally think I do like really good prices. I try to price things really low. Not, I mean, relatively speaking, right? Like I have some expensive pens in there that I will try to price at like... I don't know. There's no exact math. Uh-oh, did I freeze? My frames look good. So, yeah, it must just be you. Everything looks good here. I mean, like, I have a Stilo Art pen that was, like, seven, seven or $800 that I'll probably sell for, like, half of that. Give someone the opportunity to have something cool, something that I appreciate. You know, I'm not trying to get, like, my money back. Because, it, I mean, it's an expensive pen. Not everyone can afford that type of thing. You know, I have a Canalea pen that I'll sell for pretty cheap. I mean, reasonably speaking, not like $50, but like, you know, I don't know, 250 I don't know. I haven't, I haven't put prices on any of this stuff yet, so I don't know. But I definitely go for fair pricing. Let's sell them all and uh, give someone else a good deal. Because I've, Lord knows, I've gotten my fair share of good deals. We can pass them on. Cause I got a good, I got a good deal on my expensive pen too. So of course I did. And it was still expensive. It's still the most, even with a deal, it was the most expensive pen I've ever bought. <laughs> deal. 
so yeah we gotta you know pass on the love for sure um i mean i'll i'll tell you when i i've never bought a pin over a thousand dollars this one was yeah we're talking buku money for this one that's why this sale has to happen that's like no joke we gotta recoup <laughs> we gotta recoup quickly so i've already paid for it so we gotta recoup i broke the four digit mark I hadn't really, I think the most I'd spent before, I bought a couple pins in the seven to $800 range. Never broke the. Did you get a David Oscarson? I will confirm that this pin was not a David Oscarson. You know, it might be a slippery slope and I'm okay with that as long as I can continue to sell. Like if I can sell these 19 pins and then sell another dozen more, like I would buy another expen like stupid expensive pin. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with buying a stupid expensive pen and continuing along the path as, as you know, like stuff piling up in my house, not being used. Like, I'm not okay with that. So, yeah. You know, the one in, ten out <laughs> is where I'm at right now. <laughs> I think that's a good, that's a good math, right? One in, ten out. Especially at that price point. <laughs> like, I don't want to live there in that price point. That doesn't make me happy or comfortable. Um, but, like, if I'm going to buy, like, another Aurora, if they come out with something cool that's, like, $500, like, that's a stupid amount of money to spend on a pen. I need to... S There's pens I'm not using that need to be sold, right? Good morning, Lemonaderade. I love that name. And this has always been my theory. I've just never lived up to it in the past. It's always been, I've always talked a good game, but uh, never delivered on actually moving products out. So it's time. More than, more than time. Y'all are going to get sick of me on that one. So that deserves air horn. Brad selling pins, air horn time. Oh, I was going to pull up my, uh, my jet pens list. I'm not going to spoil the whole list because that defeats the purpose of the unboxing. But I want to. I'm trying to remember if there was anything like crazy interesting. Oh, unhighlight, please. Yeah, this one's not a massively interesting list, but I am going to get the the platinum prefontaine to test out. Which is the that entry level one that we've been talking about? Yeah, Aureus. I I think it's good to have a reason, like even though maybe it's a false justification, but if it makes you like, I'm spending outrageous money on a single pen. I don't need to keep all this other stuff, but if you have, you know, like your pens, like you're talking about, like from the inheritance and like you're using that um like i think that's a good reason like i'm a, like like that's good like there's nothing wrong with that um you know i think that's a good thing <clears throat> so yeah um the prefontaine is interesting then i got a bunch of this is a bunch of small stuff uh for november uh, i think they've got most of the big stuff in for the year my oh did we ever follow up on the pin kit the jet pins kit um, the pin attic starter kit. Um, I don't know that we ever totally followed up on that. It's happening. It's approved. Um, it's put together. It is, um, going to be out as soon as the mangaka comes back in in stock. So we're shooting for like a December 1st, -ish, uh, launch for that. So we did it. Yay. So that is done. Um, I think that was mostly like a member thing i talked about in the members newsletter um but it's it's cool it's uh it's gonna happen so i'll have more on that when it actually launches just a little uh i mean no benefit to me other than like putting my name out there but it's something i've been wanting to do with them for ages and they've been wanting to do with me and we finally i finally sat down and did it and got it all approved and it's gonna happen so we'll post more on that whenever it launches 
So Moonmen pins are a surprise. I think that's a good way to sum up what everyone's been thinking about those pins, myself included. Um, I just got the new, they have a, is it a bigger reservoir eyedropper? Um, and it has like a, a colored section. It was like a dark burgundy section. I think that's the one I just got recently. I need a shortcut for jet pins on my TTFN. I don't know what that means. The Shinobi homage? Yeah, probably. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye. Is that what this one is? Is it a Shinobi? Oh, I should put this up as I stare at it. Yeah, that one. Does it have a flat side? It is very Shinobi-ish, isn't it? I didn't even realize that. Oh, it has a flat side. Oh, my God. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Why? Son of a gun. Now I'm going to feel... Now I don't know if I can review it. <laughs> Man. Huh. Right? Like, what do you do? I know, I know. It just feels weird, right? <laughs> feels weird, feels weird, man. <laughs> I was pretty happy about trying this one out. Now I'm not so happy. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? It's a good looking pen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that anyone has an exclusive on anything unless they copyright it, I guess. And even then, China gonna China, like Sarah says. Like, that's why I don't get upset about pen cases that look close to ours. It's like, my phrase is always, we didn't invent the pen case, right? Like, our designs look like other designs probably, and other designs look like ours, and it's just is I also have a shinobi I paid three hundred dollars for <laughs> so <laughs> it's weird it's weird like I don't know how to handle this kind of stuff it's weird it's a good pen what are you gonna do it's a good pen right <clears throat> Yeah, right. We, when you're making things, making products, like you want to put your own stamp on it, right? People know what a knock product looks like, right? I wouldn't say we're the only one without shoulder straps, Tony, but we have seen the light. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. That's just sitting in a box somewhere. I was supposed to update you on that and I didn't use it. So I need to pull, I need to bring it out and find it and, and test it out. Um, I haven't because I got these new frames and I always get like extra cloths with it. So like I haven't had needed them, but I go through so many. Um, yeah. So, Hey, you settle down in there with the shoulder straps, but yeah, back to like what you're saying, Anna, the, it's the aesthetics, right? Like, you can tell what our case is. You can tell our cases. <laughs> Y'all are gonna make me fight. Um, we like shoulder straps. Um, when they when the design calls for it. Pretty simple. The design did not call for it in that case. So we made that decision. Y'all love me. The C2 amuses me more because people accuse the M2 of being an FC ripoff, and I remember pointing out how different they are, and the C2 comes out. Yeah. Like, 
I don't know. It's like, what do you do with pin BBS? I don't know what to do with that brand. It seems cool. Seems fine. I haven't really used them. They seem nice though. And they look like sailors and other pins and I don't know. They look pretty cool though. Like I'm not going to, I mean, I don't dislike them for that. I don't know. You just imagine a seed with a shoulder strap and it's basically a 1980s handbag. So I have, I don't think I've, I'll have to see if I kept this bag. So I'll keep bags for like design reasons. Um, hold that thought groovy times. I will answer that. Um, Timbuk2, I think. This was way before this new, this was like it's got to be 15 years ago when now like that the fanny pack um over the shoulder design those pouches that i like now uh, would i had one and i love that design and it was just like across across the chest and then on the back it was basically like a book size like a stand like an, almost like an a5 size like an extra thick a5 and this was this had to be 15 years ago. I'll have to see if I still have that because I keep some of these weird designs. This was like a precursor to what we're seeing now with the resurgence of some of these fanny packs and things like that. Um, groovy times. When are the Burtons out? I got 70 of them in this week. I'm tr I think I'm just going to go ahead and release them. Uh, what's today? Tuesday. Later this week, even though I know those will sell out, because I have more coming. I'm not going to wait until I get all of them in because there's only going to be like a hundred and a hundred, a little over a hundred total. So that will be through the knock newsletter that I will notify that those are for sale. That will be this week. Um, like in the next day or two, they're ready, ready to roll. Um, that's going to be a problem for me. Like I'm just not going to have enough to meet the demand and, it's just going to have to be that way in that situation. So, but Yeah, I got to find this design. There's no way. I, I don't even think I could search for it now. It's so old. But it's almost exactly like a seed case if it had a strap. Yeah, it was about it was about 2001 ish. Yeah, it was really small. It was like, it was probably like this size, but it was made to wor be worn on your back. So the straps came around, which is the de design that is popular now, but was not popular, you know, 15, 20 years ago. It was Timbuktu, I'm very certain, but I don't even know what it was called or what that design or shape was called, but that's, ex that's what it was. It was basically the seed seed pouch across your back it's now it's hot like that's the design you know my daughter likes the kavu bags i think she's got two or three of those my daughter is a bag person because she always has to carry her EpiPen with her, so she always need, needs thing. Oh, you don't want to know that one, Jesse. It's like the worst. It's the Visco Girls. This is one of those trends that I'm happy about because it's going to die quickly. It's so lame. <laughs> Groovy times, you're welcome. It will be very, very... Bum bags are the it thing. I don't know that one. It's this lame style thing that I think started on YouTube. There might be some YouTube creators. I haven't gotten the full story because um, I really don't care that much because it's so lame. I know it's not going to last. What is this bag? Um, that's not the one. But that is a weird design that I haven't seen. It looks like it folds open like a notebook, like a Trapper Keeper design. 
I wonder if Tim booked. Okay, now you got me interested. What's uh? Okay, boomers. Yeah, boy, did y'all see that? Uh, blow up on Twitter with that dude. Woo. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a trapper keeper, doesn't it? I haven't seen that one. All right, so now y'all have got me. Now I'm curious. Timbuk2. I don't even know what you'd call this thing. That was fun Twitter. Yeah, I can do that for like two, three minutes and then I'm done because I get so upset. Like That's why I have to block so much on my Twitter, like mutes and stuff. I get super upset or like I don't need to be super upset about that. Class, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate you. All right. Sorry, I've got weird, weird camera angles today. I keep my. Uh, let's just see what I can come up with. I'm sure they have lots of designs now that mimic it, but it was super old the first time around. This is like the, the after version, like this is the modern version, sling bag, crossbody bag, but the design was nothing like this um it had a front uh front pocket strip like the seed does it had uh it had triangle um triangle parts uh like fabric away from where the strap attachment was it had a larger buckle clip tiny badge thanks for the sub i appreciate you you're awesome okay really Timbuktu, stop. Triangle parts. Timbuktu. I don't know how I would ever find something this old. But I think I kept it because the design was so unique. Like, I'll sell a lot of bags I have, but if they have a unique design, I'll keep them. It's more like this fanny pack. Yeah, I need to just find it. It's closer to a fanny pack design, but as thin as like an A5 seed notebook cover. I know. There's no way to narrow it down unless I can find it and take my own picture. Let me just do like a quick image search. I know this is this is thrilling content, but now I'm like, like I'll know it the moment I see it, because it's nothing like these modern sling bags at all. Yeah, all these are reasonably current I know we might need to redesign it we designed our we designed one but it was more traditional like what you would think of a sling bag right now with you know it's a little bit boxy a little bit more storage I bet I've got now the more I think about it I bet I got rid of it but I'm gonna look How did this even come up? How did this topic even come up? Mm, this is close. This is what the buckles look like. This is what I'm describing with the triangle fabric and the large buckle. But it was a thin bag. You know what it was? It was for, it was like a, uh, it was almost like a tablet, like a, when tablets first came out, maybe? But this is what the back side looked like. It's not at all what the front side looked like. So 
Sorry, does that hurt your eyes? Knock bags will never be hip. It's a lie. Boy, this is really bugging me. It's just so old that I don't know that it would whatever pop up in anything if I don't know the name. I don't know. All right, that's enough of that. I love bag design. I wish I could design bags all day. I'd be okay with that. Me and Jeff, bagdesigner.com. We could do that. <clears throat> So we'll search at home, see if I have this bag. I even know what color mine was. It was gray and blue and had like this pink or purple, like, uh, what is this? Pork chop. The name doesn't sound familiar. <clears throat> it's like that, but wider. And it didn't have the clasp over the front. It didn't have the flap. But now I'm going through this. Through this Wayback Machine. If these links work, that ain't it. This is cool that these links still work. So, I don't know. I'll work on that. Because now I'm super interested. Do you see designing a trapper equivalent from Knock just grown up? Just with the rings for A4 paper? Um, <clears throat> we have not more, we have not gone farther than just discussing that and how difficult it would be to do the, the ring implementation well. It's just such a high point of failure when you have that built in to something like our case. Like we could make the case perfectly and, you know, up to the knock standards that we have that everything works well, functions well, and just have a high point of failure with rings in the middle that it would be almost like something we couldn't afford. Oh, Tiny Badge, I just saw your link. Let me look at that one. No, it's not pouchy at all. It's literally like if you took a seed A5 case, maybe ex deepened it slightly, and put shoulder straps, a um, uh, chest strap around it. So it looked, it looked almost just like a book holder across your bag back I'll work on that I'll find that because now it's driving me crazy so I will try to find that so does that make sense tech cowboy like that's why that would be a non-starter for us it's just like if we ever do we, we have a uh, traveler's notebook cover design that we've never released but it doesn't have built in bands through the middle just you know, it, you would just have to use the covers to tuck in and or and then bind the uh, rubber band, the covers together. We wouldn't build in the bands. <clears throat> so, yeah, we talk about that a lot. We'll have to see. We'll have to come up with some. We got some new designs in the hopper. We'll have to see what makes it out for next year. I'm just waiting on getting these new colors in for um, the, some of the small cases right now. Lookouts and Tallulahs. I, I hopefully know today. 
what my shipping dates are. Let me see. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Nope, no answer yet. So, we'll see. We'll see today if I can put out some dates. <clears throat> Alright, I think that's going to wrap it up, chat. And I'm going to go on a bag hunt. Uh, I'm actually going to work on my show notes for for tonight's podcast if y'all have anything for carrie uh that you think of later he's just sent me a text with a picture in it should we see what this text is i don't know if i'm allowed to show it or not it's just literally a picture of like a fancy orange montegrappa that looks like something i would like so we'll talk to him about that um who knows if i'm allowed to show it probably not you couldn't see it on my phone anyway so all right that's it for today I think uh, as long as we don't get in a new package from JetPens tomorrow, we'll do stationary chat. Then we'll do we'll do Goose Game on Thursday. I think that'll be fun. I'm interested. I'm not going to touch it before we'll go in fresh on that um, for the Goose Game. And then uh, next week we'll definitely have an unboxing and all that. So we will launch the podcast um, Wednesday. Um, it should be edited and released on time on Wednesday on schedule. We just won't have a live show. So just remember that if you're looking for us. And then we'll uh, we'll honk it up on Thursday and see how we do. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to have to get a honk on there now, right? We'll have to get some honks. See y'all.